Welcome everyone to the mindfulness for um, sleep. And I guess that's the proper, proper title. Mindfulness, um, mindfulness for healthy sleep. For healthy sleep. Thank you very much. I was refer. I was trying to reference a uh, slide that came up on my screen that um, I recognized was incorrect as soon as I started to read it. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening uh, for the mindfulness for healthy sleep with Beth Gibney. Um, I'd like to go ahead and start with a brief introduction. Um, I am pleased to welcome Beth once again for her um, third session in a three-part series that has dealt with mindfulness. Um, Beth has been a yoga and meditation teacher for 15 years and currently offers meditation classes through the Prana Center. Um, and that website is Prana Center, P-R-A-N-A Center.org. Um, and I will make sure that a link uh, to this uh, page is included. Um, and I, I believe it's on at the end of the slides as well. Um, Beth has a formal education in psychology and counseling and has worked in higher education for 12 years before shifting to full-time uh, work in mindfulness practices. Um, she is a fellow dysautonomia patient and has found that yoga and meditation um, has been help very helpful for her over the course of the last 24 years. Um, and Beth has been part of the Dysautonomia International uh, support groups family, support group family for um, the past seven years. She currently resides in Virginia, so she's a part of our Virginia support group, and, and we appreciate all that she has done to contribute to the groups and as well as um, helping us with these wellness activities. Um, as I mentioned, we are so fortunate that uh, Beth has guided us through an incredible three-part series that has dealt with mindfulness and wellness. Um, and just to, to remind everyone, this session is recorded um, and um, will be available on our Vimeo page, our Vimeo library, within a few days. So all three sessions will be available. Um, so if you miss those, please be sure to refer back to them. Um, and they're great. So the first one was, can you see my screen? Yeah, because I can't see it. So the first one was uh, chronic illness. Uh, the second one was chronic pain. And tonight, as mentioned, is healthy sleep. Um, so, uh, during our session this evening, the chat feature is open for you to ask questions. We do ask that you hold off on any, uh, audio audible questions until the end. Um, I know Beth, Beth will address some questions, I believe in the beginning. Um, if there are any, uh, feel free to chat, put it into the chat room and I will bring those up to her attention if she doesn't see them. Um, so the best course of action is to wait to the end to ask any questions because this session will be dealing with a very quiet, calm um, interaction that Beth will be the primary person who will be speaking to the group. Um, welcome, Beth. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you for that kind introduction and for, um, for bringing us together. Thank you for creating all of the wellness programs, which I, I know you've done and I know that um, all of us appreciate having. It's great that these sessions are recorded because we are able to access them at any time. Uh, so, and thank you all for being here, uh, whether you're participating now in this live class or joining us for the recording later on. Um, Kirsten, we can shift away from that slide and I'll, okay. I'll look to everyone. I, I do want to mention, uh, as Kristen, uh, Kirsten releases the uh, slides, that while this is being recorded, the world can't see you. <laughs> they, they're seeing me and they're hearing uh, everything that we have to say. So you are able to leave your video on if you choose. I'm able to see you and then I, and I kind of know if you've settled in or relaxed, you're also welcome to keep the video off as well. And I'm, I welcome your questions, uh, but can't answer them when we're in our guided practice. So I, I do want to start out in, in a slightly different way um, than what I've done in the last two classes. I want to talk most at the beginning and give you some information about how mindfulness helps sleep. And then I want to give you actual tips for falling asleep and for staying asleep. Then we'll do a guided practice. And if you hang on and if you wake up at the end, uh, you'll get more resources and then we'll have time for questions. We have plenty of time for questions. So that's sort of the flow of what we're doing. Um, so I'm just gonna check in to see, are you, I'm wondering if people are seeing my face cause I'm still seeing the screen share. I'm wondering if we can stop that screen share. So you yep. can see me. Yep, thank you. Sure, thank you, there we go, perfect. And then I can see the chat a little more easily. So if I am able to answer questions um, and if, if there's anything urgent, typically what's happened in these mindfulness 
meditation practices is that every once in a while, someone feels a little lightheaded from focusing on breathing. So let me just start out by saying, if you feel any lightheadedness, any dizziness, any discomfort, just return to your natural breathing rhythm. Uh, you can be seated at this time, you can be reclined, feel comfortable. Uh, so I, I want to begin by reminding you that I am not a medical sleep professional. What I am is a person who has struggled with sleep for my entire life, and I have studied a lot about sleep. I am a patient with POTS, with Ehlers-Danlos, with mast cell activation, and other diagnoses that make sleep a little extra challenging. And then in my professional work, my education and my experience is in counseling and in teaching yoga and meditation. And so I've had clients come to me for help with sleep, and I've been able to see what works for many other people. So what I'm sharing with you tonight is what I've studied, what I've practiced, and what I've had clients have success with. It's unlikely, unlike anything that you've seen, in that we're not just going to talk about sleep hygiene and we're not just going to talk about meditation. I'm going to merge some of these issues together and offer you the best that I have for you. Sleep does not happen easily for every human. It doesn't come naturally to everyone. And so I think it's important that we let go of comparing ourselves to anyone else's sleep. And also remember that sleep changes over time changes through our lifetime. So the, the recipe that we find at one age and one time is not necessarily the recipe that we need for healthy sleep at another time. Meditation and mindfulness have been very helpful for me, for, for people around the world, in sleep and in rest and in recovery and healing. And I hold no judgment about using any other strategy that works for you. Uh, so know that I use other strategies as well as mindfulness. I'm not saying that mindfulness is the only path to healthful sleep. Sleep challenges in the dysautonomia community are very common. So if you're experiencing sleep challenges, you're in good company. Our dysregulated autonomic nervous systems can cause sleep issues, as can chronic fatigue, um, fibromyalgia, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. There's lots of diagnoses that can create some extra sleep challenges or you might have a diagnosis of a sleep disorder, um, insomnia, a restless leg, or a movement disorder. So you could have some medical conditions that are diagnosed and that's uh, contributing to sleep challenges, or you could just be like all the other humans on the planet that are struggling with sleep. Hi, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, d I think somebody knows that I'm doing voiceover interpreting, and I was just wondering if uh, you guys could slow down a little bit because so I'm repeating be, what you're saying. I'll be the only one speaking. Um, okay. And, and I, it will get a little bit slower? Uh, when we're moving into the practice, yes. Okay. Yes. One second. Uh, so I, I want to, um, this is a, gr a great time to stop, actually. That was a, a good pause. Uh, thank you. Uh, that was a good moment because I do want to mention that I highly recommend another webinar to learn about sleep. Uh, it's Dr. Alan Pasinski's webinar on breaking the cycle of chronic pain, poor sleep, depression, and fatigue. And I'll have that listed in resources at the end. So we will move to slides at some point. So you'll be able to see some of my information that's in writing. So again, it's Dr. Alan Pasinki's uh, webinar. It's on Vimeo. And he is a professional who works with patients with dysautonomia. And I'll, I'll give you the, the, the quick version, which is when he talks about chronic pain, poor sleep, depression, and fatigue, he believes that we need to approach all of these issues at the same time and that there's no one magic formula for everyone. Uh, so I, I mention him because that's a whole other resource for you about sleep. He has a medical perspective on it and he can give more information about uh, dysautonomia and how it's affecting sleep. I'm going to talk about mindfulness uh, and how mindfulness helps me, it helps uh, many, many people treat chronic pain. It can't take away our challenges. It changes our relationship to the experience. 
it changes the way we concentrate, it changes the way we focus, it, uh, it gives us a practice. And this is why we call them mindfulness practices or meditation practices, because we have to practice again and again and again. Very few humans on the planet will master meditation or master mindfulness. So I'll, I'll pause here to talk about what is mindfulness and what is meditation. I did talk a lot about this in our last session. So if you want to look at mindfulness for chronic pain, I go a little bit more in depth here. The overview is that mindfulness is the act or, or the choice of paying attention on purpose to the present moment. We pay attention on purpose to the present moment. Meditation is just one way that we can pay attention on purpose to the present moment. There are many benefits to meditation. Some of the relevant benefits that I want to highlight, we steady our mind. And as we steady our mind, our body responds by quieting our nervous system. We begin to relax our muscles. We relax the skeletal system. We shift from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic state. We shift from fight or flight into rest and digest. We're choosing the act of shifting our way of being in our body. And as I mentioned, continued practice increases our concentration over time. And it gives us the choice on where to put our attention. Now that can be very helpful when we're talking about sleep. Because if you're like many people, when you wake up during the night, your thoughts shift here and there. So we're going to experience a mindfulness practice in a moment, but I want to give you some tips first. Now, I will start by saying my entire philosophy on sleep is based on one statement. We say to ourselves, and now it is time to sleep. We must choose rest. We must choose sleep. So we say to ourselves, now it is time to sleep. So Kirsten, if you're available, now would be a great time to get ready for that first slide. We say to ourselves, now it is time to sleep. We need rituals to signal time for sleep. Now you can read about sleep hygiene, this step number one. You can read about, I'm assuming that you've heard of this and that you've read about it. And if not, you're able to read about it at any time. It's interesting to me because these hygiene lists often leave out what mindfulness practice offers, which is addressing a busy mind. So the next step, we let go of the future. We can write out our to-dos. We can write out our priorities. We let go of the past. We let go of the day. We change our clothes. You, you might bathe, you might shower, or take a warm bath. And we need to let go of emotions and experiences. So you may have been following sleep hygiene tips, but you might not have been utilizing writing a to-do list before you go to bed so that you can shut out the future. You might, you might have been changing your clothes, but now it's a time to think about. That's a way of letting go of the past. Some other recommendations, you can write in a gratitude journal, or if journal sounds too intimidating, you can think of it as just a time to write your highs and lows, something simple. You could keep a prayer or a healing list, a list of somewhere that you want to send love, uh, someone in need. We can practice metta meditation, which is a loving kindness meditation, and essentially we send love to ourselves, we send love to someone else, we send love to a larger community. And again, that practice is available online or in yoga and meditation classes. Essentially, we are choosing to breathe and we climb out of the mind and back into the body. We'll leave this slide up. You're welcome to, to take a photo or a screenshot of it. If you are not sleepy, right, I can hear some of you saying, but I, I don't feel sleepy, I'm not ready for bed. I recommend that you choose rest or restful activity. We need to relax the body 
we need to give the body a break. And so we choose a certain time. Sleep hygiene tells us to be consistent in the time we go to bed and the time we wake up. And I recommend that we have a consistent message. And now it is time to sleep. Now the next part is dealing with what happens when we wake up. It is very normal. It is, it's important that we have sleep cycles, that we have arousals during our sleep. We need to wake up. We wake up more times than we remember. So sleep has a rhythm, sleep has an architecture, and sleep has cycles. All of this is available for you to read about online. What tends to bug people is when we wake up and we know we're awake and then we can't get back to sleep. So we need to prepare for sleep like we would prepare for any activity that we're going to do for a set amount of hours. Now, why can't you get back to sleep? Well, you can analyze that during the day. Uh, typically, it falls into two categories, an internal interruption or an external interruption. So we can prepare for an external interruption by creating a nice dark room, by creating a nice space for ourselves. You might even turn a digital alarm clock away, even that kind of light can be distracting. And then we need to tend to the internal disruptions. So we can go to the next slide and talk about preparing for sleep. We need to set ourselves up for success. So many of us experience pain once or over time. So we need to address pain before we go to bed. We might do that by gently stretching to release some tension. We can address digestive issues, hunger or pain. We could ice injuries or put heat on tight muscles. We can relax in the bath or in the shower. Or we can tend to the mind. We could have emotional or mental pain or discomfort and we release our negative emotions and we cultivate positive emotions through journaling or through contemplative practices like meditation. Now we also need to support our systems, right? We need to align our body. Uh, we need proper support for our neck. I know that finding the right neck pillow uh, can take many of us with cervical spine issues a lifetime, right? I see heads nodding because yes, it is difficult to find that pillow, but don't give up the search. We need to support our knees, we support our joints. And this next bit of information about relaxing your nervous system is something that I, I've made this list. This list is not something you're gonna find online. It's my, my personal strategies, uh, what I've researched and what works for me. You've all seen an eye mask for sleep, and we believe that it's to block out light, and that is one purpose. In yoga, we also use eye pillows, and so when we go into relaxation in a yoga class, we might put an eye pillow that has just a little bit of weight, and we put that on our eyelids, and it has a calming effect on the nervous system. So those masks are not just cute, they're not extra. They can bring just a little bit of soothing to your nervous system, and I find that they help me go back to sleep more easily. You can use earplugs to quiet out the sound. If you're a sensitive light sleeper, we want to limit all distractions. You can have a pillow for your feet. So I'm going to use my hands on the screen to show you. If your feet were at the edge of the bed, you could have a, a pillow that's lined up and your feet end up touching the pillow so that you know where you are in space. So any of my other Stanlos friends will know sometimes we need help with proprioception. We need to know where we are. So having your feet touch something at the end of the bed can be soothing. Many people like a weighted blanket. And then the last approach is when we're laying there and we're awake, we can smile. We can accept what is. So hopefully these resources will help you. And again, feel free to screenshot or take a photo. Uh, we'll be starting a practice soon. Uh, so I want you to know that if there's anything I haven't addressed, keep it in mind or you can add it into the chat. I won't be able to address it until we get to the end, but know that I am aware that I cannot address or solve all sleep issues. What I can do is offer you everything I've got. And if there's anything that comes up as an extra need, you can always reach out to me after this practice. 
So Kirsten, we can uh, close this slide down. We can stop the screen share and we can begin to shift our position. You might want to sit up a little taller or stretch your legs. I'm ready to stretch my legs. You might want to recline. You've been in a seated posture for long enough. So feel free to get comfortable in any way that works for you. We're going to practice a few strategies that I, I hope at least one will make you feel good, will help you feel relaxed. And all of the practices can be used to help you go to sleep and it can be used to help you go back to sleep. So first we'll bring our hands into a mudra. A mudra is a seal that translates from Sanskrit to a seal. So I'm gonna put my hands right in front of the camera so you can see. I'm gonna put my left hand in my right and I'm gonna let my thumbs gently touch, right? So you obviously do not have to hold your hands up this high. You can lower them down. So it looks like this. It's called Dhyani Mudra. And we want to cup our hands just to practice, just to try. It's not essential, it's optional. We want to imagine that this is the, the bowl that is filling with all that we need from this time together tonight. You can steady your gaze on one point. You gently close your eyes. Begin to notice your breath. Your body has been breathing all day. We're simply going to tune our awareness into the rhythm of breath. Notice how your inhalation and your exhalation have a rhythm and a timing. Let's begin to shift that timing and therefore the rhythm. We'll begin to inhale for a count of four whatever works for you. And exhale for a count of five or six. So through rhythmic breaths, begin to make your exhalation longer than your inhale. This is a way to release tension. We make extra space in the body to receive breath. If you feel any dizziness or any discomfort, let your breath rhythm return to its natural state. Notice what it's like to count the inhale and count the exhale. And then let your rhythm come into a, a balanced timing. Return to your natural breath. You might not have even been aware of that natural breath until now. And we'll shift to a three part breath. We want to draw breath lower into the abdomen, then up into the ribs, then all the way up into the chest. And we exhale chest, ribs, and belly. It's a full breath. Not necessarily a deeper breath. We're bringing it lower and deeper to make the breath complete. It doesn't need to be any excessive amount of breath. If it helps you to pay attention to the present moment, you can place one hand at your chest or you could place one hand at your abdomen and you can bring the breath low into the belly, up into ribs, up into chest. Exhale, chest and ribs and belly. Dirga pranayama, three-part breath. We choose to focus on breath. We choose to be here now. There's something that you have come in search of tonight something that made you turn this recording on. If you could receive anything from this practice, even if it seems like a miracle, what would you like to receive? This breath fills you and makes this moment 
complete. We release any judgment that might rise, any judgment saying, my mind wanders, any I can't. We observe without judgment and come back to awareness of breath. Your hands can rest either in Dhyani Mudra, one hand cupped in the other with thumbs gently touching, or you might touch your finger and index, your index finger and thumb together to feel a connection. We choose to shift our awareness into body. Feel which parts of you touch the chair, or the bed, whatever you are supported by. Notice where you have landed for this practice. You are exactly where you are meant to be. Tune in to sounds around you now. What's the furthest sound away from you that you can hear? What's the closest sound that you can hear? Perhaps the sound of your breath, the hum of a device or light, Your eyes might begin to close as we shift to awareness of what it's like in the body. Bring your attention to the soles of your feet. Notice where they are in space. If there's any sensation or if there is ease. We'll start with our feet and fill our body with presence. Kind, compassionate awareness. You might visualize filling a glass of water. Imagine presence filling into the soles of your feet up to your ankles. Presence rises up through calves, shins, up through knees and thighs. Kind, compassionate awareness. We feel hips and belly with kind awareness. Feel ribs expand with this presence. Bring awareness up through your spine, up into neck, as if you are filling with all that you need for peace and ease. Awareness flows down through shoulders and arms, through elbows and wrists, into hands and each finger. Awareness fills your throat and face up to the crown of your head. You are in body. Kindly and compassionately. 
aware and present. We'll scan through the body to notice any tension. We'll notice without judgment. We'll notice without analysis. We'll simply observe. You can choose to relax. With an exhalation, relax your toes. With an exhalation, relax your feet. Toes and feet are completely relaxed. With an exhalation, relax your legs. With an exhalation, relax your knees. Legs and knees are completely relaxed. With an exhalation, relax your abdomen. With an exhalation, relax your chest. Belly and chest are completely relaxed. With an exhalation, relax your neck. And with an exhalation, relax your back. Neck and back are completely relaxed. With an exhalation, relax your arms. With an exhalation, relax your hands. Your arms and hands are completely relaxed. With an exhalation, relax your eyelids. With an exhalation, relax your face. Eyes and face are completely relaxed. With an exhalation, relax your jaw. With an exhalation, relax your throat. Jaw and throat are completely relaxed. Body and mind are completely Relax.
nose to toes, you are completely relaxed. In this relaxed state, your heart can soften. We release the emotions that have blocked out potential harm and kept us safe. We choose emotions. like contentment and love. We choose to feel calm and at peace. Shift your mind to an awareness of kindness. When was someone kind to you? When were you kind to a person or a pet or a place? Maybe the planet. We receive kindness easily when we are rested and at ease. In this soft, relaxed state, visualize yourself outdoors, under the moonlight. There's a stillness in the air. Movement is slower under the stars. The leaves, the tree limbs sway gently with the passing breeze. In your mind's eye, see the light of the moon highlighting flowers or plants. Insects have slowed in their flights. Birds have come to stillness. Imagine the sounds, the crickets, the owl, Imagine the cool, comfortable temperature of the air on your skin. The light of the moon shines on a lake in the distance. See in your mind's eye the ripples are slow and steady, like the rhythm of your breath. Each wave, like an inhale, receding like an exhale. You can rest in the moonlight. You might choose to rest in the hammock 
tied between trees waiting for you or in the comfortable chair nearby. Perhaps you'll choose to sit and lean your back against the grounding tree. Look up towards the stars to see constellations. Drink in the energy of the sky. A quick, cooling pulse of energy. Receive the energy of the earth. A warm, steady pulse. Heartbeat. A rhythm. Rest in this balance of earth and sky. You are exactly where you are meant to be. Nature slows us, steadies our pace and offers a healing vibration. You can return to this relaxed state every time you choose. Become aware of your breath, first under the moonlight, And then in your seat where you've landed tonight. You hold a space in our community with your contributions of attention, compassion, and kindness. Bring gentle movement to fingers or toes. Feel the edges of you. Feel where you begin. Your choice to be here, to be present, is a healthy choice that benefits you and all those around you. Notice how you feel in this moment. Perhaps compared to how you felt when we began. Bring fingers together in front of you. Let each finger on your hand touch its matching finger. Inhale to stretch fingers wide. Exhale, fingers come closer together. Bring gentle movement to body. You become aware. Relax and at ease. This was conscious rest, conscious relaxation.
And when you feel ready, stretch legs, climb back into awareness of body. We conclude our practice. I bring my hands together in front of my heart to say thank you. In yoga and meditation, we say namaste. And given the nature of this healthy sleep meditation, this might be the time for you to shift off into sweet slumber. But if you are with us, we'll begin to share one last screen, one last slide with you, a slide of resources for your sleep. I mentioned a webinar. You can take a picture of this slide. You can screenshot it. This webinar can be very helpful. Breaking the cycle of chronic sleep sorry, chronic pain, poor sleep, depression, and fatigue, and you'll find it on Vimeo. I mentioned sleep hygiene. You might wanna research that. Find what works for you for healthy sleep. Research the benefits of mindfulness. I mentioned benefits at the beginning. See what you find. And of course, I encourage meditation. Meditation is one type of mindfulness. Perhaps going for a walk outdoors suits your needs. Being with your pets, being with other people's pets. Find a way to connect and be present. My classes are one option. I offer weekly guided visualization on Wednesday nights. And I'll be starting a mindfulness for chronic pain next Thursday at this time at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I have coaching sessions available and I do offer a discount code for people who need financial support, like many of us who have chronic illness. My meditations are one of many options that are available to you online. You can reach me by email down at the bottom of the screen. My email is bethgb07 at gmail.com if you have any further needs. I'm happy to take questions at this time. You can write them into chat. That's typically the easiest way and Kirsten will read them to us. And so, Kirsten, I turn it to you. Oh, great. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much, Beth. That was incredible. And, and I know from personal experience that I am very relaxed and um, some great pointers and tips and techniques. And um, I, we so appreciate all of the time that you have put into um, providing these wellness classes for Dysautonomia International. And just as a reminder, so I should probably go on. Um, sorry everyone just as a hi <laughs> just as a reminder um these classes are recorded and will be um uploaded on our vimeo page i did uh, provide that to everyone so it's vimeo.com forward slash dysautonomia um, we do have one question it was regarding the slides and having those emailed after um, i don't have a way I, I could email individually the slides if you wanted me to beth um, or people could reach out to you it's completely up to you if you want to share the slides or um, send me an email since I don't have your email and it, um, obviously can't send it right now. But if you email me, whoever, uh, let's see who's asking. It was Hannah Fernie. Hannah. Um, so Hannah, if you could email, email me at bethgb07 at gmail, I'd be happy to talk with you and um, get them to you in whatever format is best. Great. And then we have a second question. Do you have any suggestions for those of us who cannot visualize things and do not have a mind's eye. Mm -hmm. So I, I will um, go out on a limb and say that um, we can all imagine, right? So I, I use the mind's eye as a, um, a way to just not say imagination over and over and over. Um, so there's a, a way that you imagine. If it's not visual, then the fourth part, that visualization, isn't the tip for you. It's not the, it's not the technique for you. The great news is it doesn't have to be. 
There's many other uh, mindfulness practices. There's many other meditation techniques. Visualization is just one. Uh, so to review what we did, first we, we focused on our breath. Uh, then we focused on bringing presence into our, our body. We actually focused on our breath and we focused on what's happening around our body. We did an external sweep, external awareness. Then we brought presence into body and we filled our body with presence from the ground up, from our feet, up through our legs. So that was using our, our mind to simply focus. Now, if you needed uh, more connection, you could literally touch where you want to bring awareness. Um, we then shifted into, what did we do next? We shifted into the body scan next, where we consciously relaxed our toes, relaxed our feet. There's another technique which is a contract and release technique. So um, you can imagine a contraction is a tightening. So if I were guiding that, I would suggest that you make a fist and you make it tight and you make it tight and you make it tighter and tighter and tighter, and then you release. As a person with enough sensation in my body, I do not lean towards the contract and release, the, that tension and letting go. It's very effective. It's just not my favorite. And not knowing who would be seeing this, it's not the one I chose. Instead, I chose the, the choice just to let go. So visualization does not have to be your thing. And I, I can see the next question. Um, how long before sleep should we do this meditation? Or do we do this if we can't sleep? It's all up to you. So I, I mentioned, and, and Dr. Prasinki mentions, there's no one recipe. Uh, you can read sleep hygiene recommendations. Sleep hygiene recommendations will talk about how your activities during the day affect sleep. We need to exercise during the day. We need to eat the foods that nourish us, or for some of us, the foods that we don't have allergies or histamine reactions to during the day. So the daytime matters. Then we shift into a time period where we avoid stimulation. We avoid screens. Um, we avoid large meals before bed. Two hours before bed is the, I think, the general recommendation. We avoid caffeine or any kind of stimulation. stimulation. Um, a, a screen, looking at your phone, can be stimulating. Um, so the typical recommendation is to begin slowing down. How long you choose for meditation can vary each night. So not only could each one of us have a different experience, sometimes I come into my meditation room where I am right now, and I last five minutes and I am done. This day needs to conclude. And then other times I'm wired, I'm awake. And so I might be in here for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and I might use some visualization, I might do, use some stretching, I, I use uh, many different practices. So can you do it before sleep? Sure, however long works for you. I wish I had a solution, but there's just no one solution for each person or for each day. And you can do this if you can't sleep. You can do this to help yourself get to sleep. You could also benefit from a regular practice. So I will recommend that you find something consistent so that your body is getting the signals and now it's time to sleep. Now, if you're someone that only has trouble sleeping a few times a year, then you might not need a ritual. But many of us who turn to resources like this have chronic issues with sleep. And so you need a chronic habit, right? We can have a chronic illness and we can have a chronic solution. We can have a continued, um, uh, a positive solution that matches our needs. Great, thank you very much. Sure. Uh, are there any other questions for Beth at this time? We don't see anything coming through. Um, Beth, any other any other thoughts before we we end this session today? I feel like I've offered my heart. I've offered <laughs> my brain. I, I'm not sure that I have anything left. Um, right to to add other than um, perhaps my one my one request my my one ask of you is to find your practice and stick with it so one meditation session one mindfulness session will give you one moment or one night of peace consistent meditation consistent practices will give you consistent 
ease, consistent peace. That is great, great advice. Thank you very much. And just as a reminder to everyone, you definitely have access to Beth's three-part series uh, through our Vimeo page. I do encourage you, um, if you didn't attend the first two sessions, to, to definitely go and check those out. But you have them at your fingertips. You can definitely go back to them at any point that you like and uh, listen to them again. So I would like to thank Beth very much for her time this evening. Um, it's been wonderful to see her again and hear her. Um, and it was great that you all were able to join us. Join us, And I wish everyone a pleasant night and a very, very restful and healthy sleep tonight. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. Thanks for your kindness. Sleep well. <laughs>